It's a new day, and I got new toys in the mail. Well, actually the day's almost over, and most people wouldn't consider these toys, but I did get what I needed to continue my generator project. When I started, I decided to go with a jaw-type coupling rather than a belt setup, because the belt setup has certain shortcomings that need to be overcome. In retrospect, I should have just started with the belt to start with. The hardware is less expensive, it's more flexible, and uh, I'll cover a little bit about the parts that I bought. I did not think that parts were, were available to do this properly. It turns out that they actually are. This here is a pulley for an alternator. And yes, it is huge. Here is an alternator. This is a 27 SI. And it is much, much larger than the original pulley. This is about a 2 inch pulley. This is a 5 inch. 5 inch as of the rim. It's actually about 4.5 inches once you wrap a belt around it. <coughs> This particular pulley I got from JEGS online, and it is a billet aluminum pulley made for racing applications. Alternators can only spin at 15,000 RPMs or so, after that they detonate and uh, fly apart, so if you have a racing engine that spins at 10,000 RPMs or something, you can't run a standard pulley. So they sell this hard anodized billet aluminum racing alternator pulley. I'm not using it for that purpose, but it looks like it'll work pretty well for what I need. And I'm very impressed with the quality of this. It's, it's very nice. It also uses a larger uh, 4L, I believe it is, size belt. Most alternators use a 3L automotive style belt. That type of belt is not really compatible with industrial type pulleys. Sometimes they say they are, but they really aren't. Uh, the reason that they use those is because this diameter is so small, you cannot wrap a larger belt around it. It uh, stresses the belt going around a diameter this small. Uh, but now that they've moved up to this size, they can use an appropriate belt. So they use a A-style or 4L, one half inch width belt, which is very nice. So I can get an industrial, a standard industrial belt for my alternator. <clears throat> now, five inches. I chose five inches uh, partially because that's all I found, but also because this small pulley diameter just doesn't work very well for this setup. As I mentioned, I need to have about a one-to-one -one setup, one-to-one -one, uh, ratio in speed for the engine and the alternator. However, you need a lot of belt tension to do a diameter that is that small. So if I wrap a belt around this pulley, I need to have my engine drive approximately the same diameter. Now my engine has a torque of about eight, uh, eight or nine foot-pounds while it's running. And that torque doesn't all come evenly, either. It comes in one, one pulse of about uh, 45 degrees or so every other revolution. So the torque is much, much higher for a short period of time. During that time, the belt can easily slip, so you need a lot of belt tension to keep, uh, keep the belt from slipping. Now, if it's 9 foot-pounds, which is an average, the peak is much, much higher. You can see that this diameter here is 2 inches, well, 2 over 12. That means that the torque is, uh, or the actual force on the belt is six times that. And that is a lot of force to put in a belt like this, so you need a lot of tension. What you can do instead to get around that is to use a larger pulley. Now you wrap the belt around the pulley here, and the torque is not nearly, uh, the force on this belt at the same torque is not nearly as great, and you don't need as much tension anymore because the belt now travels faster. You can either have the belt travel slow with a lot of uh, force, or fast with a little bit less force. And fast is definitely better. Also, a belt like this, which is a standard A-style belt, 4L360, this happens to be advertised as some sort of John Deere belt, I don't know, I guess it's common tractors or something. But uh, this is an industrial-style belt that I bought. You can get uh, fractional horsepower belts, which is the most common ones available out there. However, those are made for one horsepower and less. They won't work for an application like this. You need to get the industrial style uh, full, um, the industrial style belts. Now the reason that they sell fractional horsepower belts, one is cost. If you have a small electric motor that's a quarter horsepower, you don't need an expensive belt. It's a complete waste of money. So you just buy a less expensive belt. Also, a belt like this, it's fairly stiff. It doesn't bend very easily. You can wrap it around smaller pulleys if you get a lighter belt, like this pulley here which is why car alternators typically use a lighter belt. 
And also for small electric motors, you lose a fair amount of power just bending this belt around these pulleys. And if you only start with a quarter horsepower, you don't have much to lose before you've lost it all. So they use lighter belts. This is not a fractional horsepower belt. That's definitely something to watch out for. Anyway, this uh, alternator pulley is billet aluminum, hard anodized, like I mentioned. The quality looks to be very good. I'm impressed with it. So thank you, Jegs. Uh, but uh, I would have preferred a cast iron pulley for this. I didn't have a choice, so I just got this. This is a racing pulley, so they expect it to be spun at high RPMs. Obviously, in a racing application, weight is very important, so aluminum is better for that. Also, cast iron has a limit on the uh, rim speed that's allowed before it flies apart. Um, that would be extremely bad, so aluminum has a higher speed. You can safely spin this up at... Uh, a much higher RPM than you can a cast iron pulley. So you kind of want to watch that. Uh, they knew what they were doing when they made this. It's right for the application. For my application I prefer cast iron, but this is what I got. And this should work pretty well. Now for the engine, I found out with the other alternator that a 1 to 1 ratio made the engine a little bit underpowered. So I bought a 4 inch pulley to go on my engine. <clears throat> now this is a very standard pulley from um, I forget the name. Anyway, a very, very common pulley from a name brand American company. Should be a pretty good quality pulley. Uh, this one is cast iron. You can go up to about 6 inches in diameter on an engine in cast iron before you run into uh, uh, rim speed uh, limitations where you could get dangerous. Uh, I'm sure you can cheat that somewhat. There's a lot of safety margin involved. but I like cast iron for this because it's very heavy. This weighs probably at least 2 pounds and that gives me a little bit more flywheel on my engine which should help smooth it out a little bit and smooth out the torque variation. Now this belt is a 36 inch belt, it doesn't look that big but it is a 36 inch belt and that gives me a pulley spacing of about a foot, a little bit less, which should be appropriate for this. Um, there are guidelines on how far apart pulleys should be in a setup. You want to have them far enough apart that you get enough belt length in between them so that when there are torque variations, such as this reciprocating engine, that there's some compliance in this belt so it can stretch a little bit. Also, you don't want to make it so long that this flaps around, and uh, that's also stressful. So this is a probably a pretty good size. It's a little on the small end. <coughs> However, I don't want my setup to be too large. So that's what I'm doing there. As far as the tensioning bracket goes, I bought this. This happens to be a Mr. Gasket bracket that I also got from JEG since I was ordering anyway. It's chrome, which is, I don't know, it's chrome. And uh, it's pretty thick. This thing is not going to bend. So that's going to make it nice and solid and should make it pretty easy to adjust. As far as mounting this alternator, uh, which I'll show later, to my uh, base plate, I just bought some hardware from a local hardware store. Uh, alternators actually take uh, this particular alternator actually takes a M10 by 1.5 bolt. I couldn't find one of those in a configuration that would work for me. So I just bought this threaded rod. This is a 3 8 inch uh, by 16 threaded rod, uh, 16 thread pitch, which actually threads into that this hole just fine. I tested it out with this bolt over here. It uh, doesn't fit perfectly, but it'll be good enough for this application. And also some random hardware over here. All of this stuff together everything here on this table was about fifty dollars so this is less expensive than the other way that I had tried to go and I'm hoping that it will work better. Now I found out with that other alternator that I could only get uh, about uh, 60 amps out of it because the 10 SI series as GM designed it was designed for up to 63 amps so I should not be surprised that the aftermarket parts are junk because they always seem to be and indeed, that 105 amp aftermarket alternator was junk. If you actually tried to use it at its rated power, it would very quickly burn up. So this here is from a 19, late 1970s Cadillac, I believe. This is a 27 SI that they put on some of their uh, higher amperage draw vehicles. SCS 144 comes from more modern vehicles. That would also be appropriate. But this is a 100 amp alternator as specified by GM. And you can see that they have a more efficient fan on here. Um, still not perfect, but it's a little bit more efficient than the, uh, the tennis size style. Also, the case diameter is quite a bit larger. And it, hopefully, will actually be able to output 
more amperage. Now this is a 100 amp alternator, but I'm pretty sure if I have it output 100 amps, it's still going to overheat. However, I'm really hoping to get around 80 amps out of this setup. And I'm pretty sure this is going to let me get 80 amps, but once again, we'll have to test it out. I'd mentioned earlier that this alternator here was pulled out of a junkyard. I opened it up, inspected it, cleaned it out, and was intended to convert it to a 24 volt alternator. I didn't do that, I just put it back together. Hopefully it still runs after I took it apart and put it back together. I relube the uh, spindle bearing in the back with some uh, high temperature synthetic grease. I'm sure I didn't use the right type, it's pro probably supposed to be high molly. This is uh, just standard disc brake grease that I put in there. But This alternator is probably 30 years old, and that grease is 30 years old and black as coal, so I put some in there. This front bearing isn't perfect, but it should be good enough. If this setup works, I'll go ahead and rebuild this alternator. The brushes, the bearings, almost everything inside is replaceable with 10SI type parts, and you can buy those everywhere, so it won't be a problem to find parts to rebuild this. I also get these cool stickers from JEGS to let everybody know how awesome I am. I, uh, I guess they have free advertising that they send along with every order, or maybe it's because it's my first order, I don't know. Anyway, this uh, spindle diameter on these alternators is one of two sizes, 17 millimeters is what this one is, and I think 19 millimeters is the other common size. I, I could be wrong on that one, but this here was advertised to be 17 millimeters. So this should fit directly onto this alternator. The 27 SIs, 12 SIs, and 10 SIs, they all use the same size shaft. <clears throat> In terms of mounting everything together, I intend to use a piece of wood that I'll show you here. Uh, this time I'm not going to use metal. It turns out that skid plate that I was using is not heavy enough, so I'm just going to scrap that and go with another idea. This alternator also has some different mounting configurations. I'm going to try to make my mounting configurations that I can use basically any hinge type alternator, 180 degree hinge type alternator. I'm not sure if that'll work or not, but I'm going to give it a try. And uh, let me show you here what wood I plan on using for this. I have a couple of 4x8 sheets of 3 quarter inch MDF or whatever this is. Uh, they're finished differently, so it's kind of like the shelving material that you buy, and except they're 4x8 sheets. So I'm just going to cut these to size, one of these, and uh, use that for my mounting plate. It's wood, that's not perfect, but it's what I have, so I'm going to use that. The test platform that I made out of a skid plate didn't work out very well. It wasn't uh, solid enough, it was too flexible. So this time I'm just going to use some 3 quarter inch MDF. It should be dimensionally stable since it is MDF, so long as I don't leave it out in the rain. Much better than plywood or natural wood. So hopefully that works out, and I'm, I would like to make this set up a little bit more permanent than last time. I'm just kind of gambling that it's going to work first try. That probably won't happen, but we'll see. And I'd like to have a better wheel set up than I did before. so. I have these old wheels off of a lawnmower or something, I don't know. But uh, I'm just going to put them on here like so, with a U-bolt to hold them down. And uh, I measured out and marked where to put those holes, but I need to know what size it is. So, looks to be exactly, oh, yay big. Those wheels seem to work pretty well. I'll have to figure out uh, some way to support this side of it, some sort of handle or something, but that's a job for tomorrow, man. I have the wheels on the cart, and now it's time to mount the engine. I have it marked out here, the, the dimensions for the engine mounting holes that I plan on using. And it's important to get the right size holes in here, because I don't want the engine to be able to move around and cause belt misalignments. I'm going to be using these bolts, and they are this big. So I want to make sure that I drill the right size hole so there's not additional play in there. And that size, after some careful measurements, is uh, this big. We 
we have wheels and an engine, and this engine is mounted very solidly to this platform. I can't do any sort of compliant mount on this one because I need the belt to align, and if this moves, that's bad. So I just bolted it very solidly to this wood. Uh, this is not very resonant, so I'm hoping it doesn't make a lot of noise, but we'll have to see. So now I need to mount the alternator over here somehow. And I think I have it planned out how I'm going to do that. I cut some pieces of 14 gauge uh, angle iron, I guess it is, that I'm going to use to mount it up. And hopefully that works. One note on alternator rotation direction. I want to make a correction from what I said in an earlier video. I said that you have to rotate it the correct way for electrical reasons because the magnetic field twists inside and they offset the brushes to compensate for that. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, that's not true. These don't commutate using brushes, they commutate using diodes. And those diodes compensate for that already. They uh, already commutate at the ideal angles. So it doesn't matter whatsoever which way you turn it for electrical reasons. It's just the cooling purposes. Uh, other DC motors do commutate on the uh, uh, brushes, but these are just slip rings, so it doesn't matter. But because I have a clockwise fan and every alternator pretty much, except for a few exceptions, turned that way, I'm going to mount it this way. If I bought a counterclockwise fan, I could turn it around and put it this way. And that actually is much easier to mount, but those parts are rare, so I'm just going to put it this way. That way I can get standard alternators and they'll work.